One problem that has often been reported to our channel by the spacers among our audience is the difficulty with identifying belter vessels. See, if you go gallivanting about the Sol system, it's likely that at some point through a series of unfortunate events and terrible decision making on your part that you'll end up on a ship flying under a foreign flag. Whether in desperation or drunken stupor, you will find yourself facing such a situation. Of course, if the ship you find yourself on is under Martian control, you'll probably be able to determine this rather quickly. After all, Martians don clean-cut distinguishable unis, act like superhuman cyborgs, and even unto death will not shut up about the dream of Mars or whatever. It would have been nice to see an ocean on Mars. And then again, if you find yourself on a ship under UN control, all you have to do is look for the UN signage and symbols. After all, no one would willingly fly a ship of UN origin. Even Earthers probably secretly long to leave behind their dilapidated vessels and jump behind the controls of a sleek Martian frigate. But what about belter ships? I mean, belters are a bit more chaotic and makeshift about everything. So how do you know if you're on a belter ship? After all, you've got to be careful around them rock hoppers, for if they find out you're an inner, you could end up on a meat hook, or worse, on Ceres Station. Anyway, this is the question we are going to answer in today's video. Here's eight reasons to suspect that you're on a belter ship. Reason number one is dead people floating in space around the ship. Belters like to kill people, and also to die in the name of the belt. Seriously, if you give them even the slightest chance for a glorious death, they shall seize upon the opportunity. The belter's penchant for terminating life means that their ships must be outfitted in such a way as to streamline the killing process. On belter ships, you're always going to find airlocks particularly suited for staring into the eyes of some poor defeated soul before he's ejected into the great vacuum and beyond. Belters are all about spacing people, and next to slingshotting, it's probably their favorite pastime. So certainly look for proper execution facilities on whatever ship you find yourself on to determine if the ship is under belter command. But even more generally, just use the view screens in the ship to look for dead people floating around it. If you find some, you're most likely in belter hands. Reason number two is the ship seems stolen. Seriously, if you look around the inside of a ship and you see Martian markings, but the crew is decidedly un-Martian, to coin a word, then you're probably on a belter ship. As you know from our previous videos, there are some debate as to appropriate terminology here. Some would say belters often steal their ships, but I prefer to use the term non-consensually borrowed. Given the impoverished situation of the belter state, its soldiers and other citizens often must procure space vessels through unconventional means. Perhaps we can think of this appropriation process as ship redistribution that is necessitated by the failure of ships to just trickle down into belter possession. So if you look around a ship and there's Mormon farming imagery all over the place, but no one aboard seems very pious, and I'm not trying to blame the boosting of the Rosinante on belters, but I mean, is it a complete coincidence that Naomi Nagata is part of the ship's crew? Reason number three is aftermarket parts. As we just explained, belters often obtain their ships using questionable methods. This of course means that when repairs or upgrades are needed, despite having talented engineers like Naomi, they often aren't able to use factory parts. No matter though, belters have a way of just sticking some gum in the wiring, taping up the holes, and hoping for the best. You're going to see a lot of mixing and matching on belter ships when it comes to its weapons, tech, and shuttles. Martian and UN ships house state-of-the-art breaching pods that meet safety regulations. Belters squeeze their boarding teams into FedEx shipping containers and just chuck them at their targets. Which, to be fair, not too far out of line with general FedEx delivery practices. Reason number four is ugly ships. Belter ships aren't the prettiest. I mean, the OPAS behemoth looks more like something a god would use to pin up his favorite pictures in the heavens. Which is why I like to call the ship God's Thumbtack. And I mean, Belters actually built this ship. Still, it ended up providing a habitable shelter to the refugees in the ring space after the slowdown. The OPAS Tynan isn't the sleekest looking ship from the outside, but it more than suffices in dogfights. Martian ships are sleek and beautiful. Earth ships, well, meh, but not too shabby looking. Belters couldn't care less as long as their vessels get the job done. I mean, again, the Belters left the Mormon farming imagery up even after it was clear that the Mormons weren't getting the ship back. The belters just don't care about aesthetics. As long as they can space their enemies, they're happy. Reason number five is not having any idea who's in charge. Belter hierarchy is not always so clear. Don't get me wrong, most belters readily acquiesce to their higher-ups. It's just that, well, the power struggle over the very top of the leadership ladder often makes who the actual top dog is on belter ships unclear. Given that the belt doesn't have as organized of a government and military as Earth and Mars do, 
it's a bit harder to appeal up the chain of command to reinforce the leadership positions on individual ships. Thus, King of the Hill type dynamics prevail, wherein two or three people might squabble for the crew's loyalty. The Belter Navy, if it can be called that, is a bit of a shit show. Kamina Drummer was supposed to be in charge on the behemoth, but Ashford frequently undercut her command, and factions loyal to both leaders clashed within the ship. So if the command structure on a ship is in a bit of disarray, you're likely in the presence of belters. You gotta pick your captain and hope you choose the person who's gonna come out on top. Reason number six is bubbling insurrection. This reason is valid for belter ships and space stations. Just as there are power struggles that take place among the elite ranks of belters, so too do grassroots rebellions often spring up in Belterland, endeavoring to peacefully overthrow their commanders via non-violent homicide. Sorry, I know that's a bit nonsensical, but I feel like the Belters need some more professional PR, and if no one else is going to do it, then it's my duty to be that guy. Anyway, once again, given the loose structure of the Belter state, uprisings are hard to avoid. I mean, yes, most Belters are committed to the cause of helping the Belt rise to prominence in the Sol system, but that doesn't mean they all have the same ideas for how that should be done. And given the lack of a system to lodge complaints and object to prevailing strategy, Belters who disagree with the status quo often must get their hands dirty, if they're not already, from working in the mines, and risk their lives in attempting a coup. If you're on a Belter ship and you don't hear any whispers of insurrection, then you're not on a Belter ship. Reason number seven is non-traditional piloting. Martian and UN Navy men. They go to prestigious training academies to learn how to operate and fly ships. They're trained and polished stewards of the void. They learn from the best and do things by the book. Given how dangerous traversing the void is, this is probably for the best and the most logical way of going about spaceflight. However, belters, they aren't afforded the same privileges. They don't learn to fly from esteemed veterans of the void. Rather, their pops puts them behind the wheel of a shuttle at seven years old, and they either figure out how to fly the damn thing or die trying. They fly ships like rednecks drive tractors. Their techniques don't usually jibe with accepted methods for operating their machines, but they learn so young that they figure out how to make things work their way. The farm is to rednecks as space is to belters. Having grown up in these environments, both groups' instincts are adapted to their surroundings. Rednecks do probably have better bones, though. Still, belter pilots don't use the technical manual. They just get behind the controls and let their senses take over. If you're on a belter ship, you might be in for a bumpy ride. But belters don't believe in motion sickness. And in the end, you'll get to your destination just fine. Or not. Reason number eight is deviation from spaceflight norms. The establishment states in the solar system might hate one another, might sometimes even nuke each other, but most often they abide by intrasystem rules and regulations when flying through space or engaging with each other. This means that when coming into contact, UN and Martian ships will respect each other's space, openly communicate with each other, and treat captured agents of each other's states justly. The Belt, well, they're a work in progress. If you're on a Belter ship, you might find the crew just openly ignores incoming communications, will threateningly hurl themselves towards planets full of billions of people, and will open fire before asking questions. That said, this is something that Kleiss Ashford worked very hard to change during his life, and indeed the Belt today is a much more normative state when it comes to respecting intrasystem treaties. So it's possible that this rule might not apply. But still, if on a Belter ship, you're probably going to witness some irregular behavior going on when it comes to respecting foreign states and following rules. Anyways, that's my list. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do give the video a big thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments below what I got wrong, what I got right, what I left out completely. Remember to subscribe to this channel and hit that damn notification bell so you don't miss a damn thing. For now, my name is American Ben, and I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.